From booster packs to booster gold, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. And joining us today, we have returning Shane Crown. Happy to be here. We have brand new Luke Field. Very happy to be here. And also returning Danielle Radford. I feel okay. Well, mm. good. Uh, two goods and an okay. That's <laughs> two out of three ain't bad. Hey, if you're a baseball guy. I'm not, but sure. Yeah, that would continue. be a good average, <laughs> two out of three. Yeah. You know, being a baseball guy. Yeah, one of those baseball guys. I feel like no one watching this has any knowledge of what you just said about baseball. <laughs> I don't, I think baseball is the nerdiest sport. Yeah, there's a lot of fractions. In, it's, like, it's, like, yeah. it's like, do you like math and people in button downs? Baseball. Um, <laughs> it's very stat heavy. Well, yeah. now that I've pissed off some of our audience, probably only a small <laughs> amount though. Danielle, you've played before. Shane, you've played before. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke, you're brand new. And maybe you're watching for the first time. The game is very simple. These are incorrect statements but the things that you know and love. It's up to you to find what's wrong, buzz in, and correct me. Uh, all your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, um, actually. Uh, if you don't, I won't give you the point. I'll feel very bad about it, but it's basically the only rule, so I'll I have to abide by it. I'll also feel very bad about it's it. It's <laughs> heartbreaking when someone yeah. loses something, when the, even the, something that they know and just, like, did, didn't remember that. And you can interrupt me whenever you want. So as soon as you spot what's wrong, you can, you can go ahead and buzz in. Well, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna jump right in here. We're gonna read this uh, this first question. The world is flat. We may live on a globe, but Narnia, Middle Earth, Discworld, and the world of the Never Ending Story are among the many settings portrayed as flat or close to it. Luke. Um, actually, I'll guess Narnia ain't flat. Narnia's flat. Yeah, Damn. yeah. They go to the ends of the earth. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Yes, Danielle. Um, actually, the world of the Never Ending Story is not flat. Incorrect. Oh! Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, Shane. <laughs> um, actually, I believe Discworld, which I absolutely know what it is, is not flat. Shane, you would be wrong in that capacity. Discworld is, uh, the name is Discworld. Yeah. Even the name no, it, itself implies that it yeah. is on a disc. It's, um, it's on a disc carried by like a bunch of turtles. Yeah, it's, it's a turtle flying through space with a couple of elephants with a disc on top of it. And yeah. Just spins. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, actually, it's that other one that you said. Yeah. Can you? Do you remember what it is? <laughs> uh, um. You're correct that the other one I said is the wrong one. I'll, I'll. It's hard to remember. I'll sometimes. give it to you unless someone can remember what I said and say the other um, thing. That, actually, oh, wait, wait, Shane, Shane, uh, Shane is being too. Um, actually, Middle Earth is not flat. That is correct. <laughs> uh, so it's got elves. But it's not flat. Yeah, those two things can coexist. Womp. 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 Uh, yeah, Middle Earth is round. At one point it was flat, um, but then it was made round. Uh, uh, it was reshaped into a sphere to prevent humans from sailing into the Undying Lands. Well, that is a point kind of for Shane. Uh, I'll take it. You know what, you'll take it. It's not the is. most honorable point, but <laughs> a point's a point at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh, this next question is a wrestling question. Five-time world champion Booker T is the most decorated wrestler in WCW history and the first African-American WCW world champion. He's known for repeating the phrase five time in reference to his five world championship titles, going so far as to say five time, five times on more than one occasion for emphasis. Uh, Shane, you, <laughs> Luke, Luke and Danielle are both parsing every single word of that and slowly coming in, and Shane is just like, oh, I'm a, I'm I'll a common guess. ass. I'll guess. <laughs> I have no stake in this. No. I don't, I don't know anything about wrestling, <laughs> but I can maybe back into this. All right. Uh, um, actually, not all five titles were uh, WCW. Uh, incorrect. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Danielle. Um, actually, he does not say five times, five times. He says five times. Five time, five time, five time world champion. Uh, no, uh, I mean, maybe he's said it before, before, but no, no, I think it's more more of the, the five time, five time, yeah. Uh, Lou. <sighs> um, actually, his wins span WCW and WWE from like the, when they, when they combine. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's actually more than five? That is is correct, uh, or at least partially so. He's uh, He has more than five uh, okay. world championships. He's actually the six-time world champion, oh, cool. even though he still says five-time. Uh, well, point for Luke there, point for Luke. 
When author James S. A. Corey began working on The Expanse, he had imagined it as an MMORPG or tabletop game setting. Instead, it became a series of novels, nine in total are currently being planned, and a TV series. Oh, and of course, an Expanse tabletop RPG is slated to come out later this year. Took him long enough. Uh, Shane. Um, actually, it really didn't take him that long at all. All this happened in about <laughs> six months. Time is relative, <laughs> and who can say what a long time is? Uh, no, no, that's not what we're going Time for. is also flat. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, uh, I'm actually, they're not going to do a tabletop one, because there's just too many of those already. We, and they're not going to beat Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, they are doing a, they are uh, a tabletop. What a waste of money. Yeah. Um, actually, it is not nine books that are planned. It is... Ten books that are planned. They've said that it's nine that are really oh, planned. But I must say, no one got that. The um actually here is that James S. A. Corey is not one person. It's actually a writing duo writing under a single pseudonym. Uh, so it was wrong to say that he was doing anything mm. because it is in fact two people. It's Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. I wonder why they did that. Like, why do they think two is like worse? Well, it's the same way as like you know. Oh God, I, I can't believe I'm going to use this as an example. E.L. James decided that she couldn't do Fifty Shades of Grey under her own name because she wouldn't be taken seriously. I'm sorry. People obsess about Fifty Shades of Grey. That's that's totally. <laughs> yeah. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, we should have a Fifty Shades of Grey question in here <laughs> at some point. Well, we'll move on to our next question, which is a fan submitted question. Uh, so this is from one of our fans here, and this is about Magic: The Gathering. Uh, this question comes to us from Dimp. Uh, that's Dimp with an exclamation point. There are many Elder Dragons in Magic the Gathering, like Nicol Bolas, Chromium Ruel, and Arcady Sabbath. Among them is also 15,000 plus year old Niv Mizzet, an arrogant but brilliant inventor who even has his own metal name for him, Mizium. Yes, um, Luke. Um, actually, Niv Mizzet is not one of the Elder Dragons. He is a very old dragon, but like the original Elder Dragons was like a five card cycle from like antiquities or something like that. Um, but he was not part of it. He came in later in a different set. That's but, correct. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to oh. see, see how far you get. Yeah, he's from uh, Ravnica. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that is correct. Uh, that he is, a, he is an extremely old dragon, but he is not an elder dragon. Yeah. Uh, it does not officially have that title. And actually, uh, I'm actually, when he can, he does lie on his idea about how old he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, Come on, guys. I'm only 8,000, but thank you for the compliment. Oh, yeah. what? What's that? Oh, yeah. Well, you don't look a day over 7,000. Yeah. <laughs> he is part of, like, the, the Is It Guild, I think, or at least he has the colors of the Is It Guild, who are very, like, uh, tinkerers and experimenters. So I imagine he does a lot of, like, experiments to be, like, aged age-defying dragon makeup and, like, things like that. It's so funny know? to me, too, the, uh, of, like, of lore where where dragons are also, like, tinkerers and inventors. Like, you're <laughs> yeah. already a dragon. It's like, how yes, but I've got machines to do. How do their little hands work? They, how do they... <laughs> how are they, like... like? They can cast fireballs and do all sorts of magic, but they can't figure out how to type yeah. They <laughs> only have three fingers. Yeah, it's tough. I'm just going to answer this now with three fingers. Yeah. Let's, do, Nicole, let's do this for the rest of the set. Yeah, see how... Like dragon sure. Claude. To know what the dragon. dragon's life is like, yeah. Nicol Bolas is constantly calling N Niv Mizzet to be like, hey, I can't figure out my email. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You're, you're one of those younger yeah. dragons. Can you yeah. help me out here? I'm sorry, I'm 15,000 years old. You can't expect me to know all this stuff. <laughs> What's a PDF? Yeah. Yeah. Here's our first shiny question. This is a game called Mounting Suspicion. We have a, a series of friendly animal transports here. Please match the name tag with them. That is the name where they should be returned to if they are lost. Who would ride these mounts? Let's flip it over. Let's take a look here. It might be clear oh, when you're looking yes. at it. Uh, oh, bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are all things someone might ride. Okay. Uh, but who is the person riding them? Okay. I don't mm. think you can ride some of these. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Shane, tell us what you got here. Great. Um, this little hamster fellow is clearly Bomberman's okay. mount. The goat there belongs to Randy. Okay. That dancing fox is Go-Go. <laughs> okay. The Final Fantasy chicken is Fio. The hair dragon belongs to Kirby. Okay. And the camel, just a camel, is the Inquisitor. All Right. Luke, let's see All what right, you got here. All right, here we go. So I think this is the only one I'm sure of because they wear the same shoes. This is Kirby. Okay. Then this is the Inquisitor. Uh, Randy. Yeah. The chicken uh, is 
HBO, I hope. Okay. Uh, go, go. Okay. And this is Bomberman. Great. Pure and entire guesses, all the lot of them. Cool. And Danielle, what do you have? Wow, we guessed a lot of the same things for things that we don't know. Okay. This Hamtaro looking dude, I put for Kirby. Uh, Theo. Okay. I, I also have Randy. For the Final Fantasy mount, I said the Inquisitor. Um, go, go. And I also said that this uh, camel dude belongs to Bomberman. Very good. Um, well, looking at this, Shane, you got zero correct. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Danielle, you got one correct. I did it. And Luke, I believe you got two correct. Um, but let's show the <laughs> yeah. actual answers. You spotted the shoes. That is, in fact, Kirby's mount. Uh, that is Rick. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> that's Rick. No, it's not. Yeah, it's Rick. Come on. <laughs> that can't be Rick. <laughs> that's Look, Rick. I was on board with this puff, puff parsh marshmallow <laughs> that can, like, suck things up. But a gerbil named Rick, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have the Greater Nugalope. Uh, that is the Mount of the Inquisitor. I'm sorry, from what? The Greater Nugalope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that is from uh, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, then uh, this is Louis, who is Bomberman's uh, mount. Um, this is a chocobo. AKA a Final Fantasy chicken, mm -hmm. as, as it was re referred to. Um, uh, that is Gogo. -Go. We chose a slightly lesser, perhaps lesser known uh, Final Fantasy character to try, to try to trip people up there, and maybe we did. This is Flammy uh, from Secret of Mana. Uh, and then finally, the SV Camel from uh, Metal Slug, uh, who is. Uh, that is uh, what that looks yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Hey, you noticed some mistakes we made in a previous episode. Now, we're giving out points. Here's some of our favorite corrections from you. At E. Gordon M. says, Harry Dresden did not rescue the entire litter of puppies. When he returns them to Brother Wang, he says, less is more, better than nothing. Mouse is not a part of this count. But what is a part of this count is your point. One point for you. At Brodisius93 says, Um, actually, when speaking of the drugs from different universes in the shiny question, you say that it is about future drugs, when the Star Wars series actually happened a long time ago. Yes, this is true. One point. From our exclusive dropout Discord, both Black says, Um, actually, the image we showed in our shiny question is not the original cover art for Tetris. That is Tengen Tetris, an unlicensed version that Atari ported under their Tengen brand to NES from their licensed arcade title. However, that cover art does precede the Tetris art that you're familiar with, so the real question is, is Tengen Tetris still Tetris? Now, I don't have a good answer for that, so instead of giving you one point, I'm gonna give you four blocks arranged in the shape of a one. We'll move on to our next question here. This is about uh, Predator. Predators, also known as Yauja, follow a code of honor when hunting. For instance, predators are expected to hunt worthy game, which means prey must be capable of defending itself. This excludes children and the elderly, and must not be too closely linked to other lives, i.e. no pregnant women. Failure to adhere to this code is punishable by death. Yeah. Um, actually, in the most recent Predator movie, uh, the predator decides one of these children is actually a worthy foe because of their mental capabilities. Uh -huh. Jacob Tremblay's character is like really, really smart and figures shit out, like how to use its mech and stuff. Interesting. That's not uh, that's not what we were going for here, but um, we'll get our fact checker on that. Um, actually, it is not punishable by death. It is punishable by um, exclusion. So like they cast them out and you long, no longer get to like hang out with your predator dudes. <laughs> That's correct. Um, uh, yeah, that sounds uh, very then, right. Too. Um, so, Luke, if you're right, then uh, I'll give both you a point for, for this one. I um, can't totally <laughs> tell where it fits into their code of honor, but I'm going to go ahead and say he's right on okay. this one. All right, cool. Uh, we'll, we'll give you both a point for that, oh, Ben. For, nice. uh, because part of that was a wording problem on our point. It would typically exclude children, but you know what? In this, uh, in the new one, it, it didn't. Uh, and you uh, identified what we intended to be wrong here, which is that They're not exiled. adhering to the code yeah. Yeah, is excommunication, not, not death. Uh, you don't get to hang out with your predator buddies. Uh, Sorry, dudes, you don't get to go to the Predator Salon and get your Predator dreads <laughs> cut on. by your Predator lady. <laughs> oh, man, I love imagining just a row of Predators with, like, <laughs> there's, there's <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, just, just yeah. chatting with everyone. In the, Doing, like, the apple cider vinegar rinse and being like, yeah. I just don't know, smell keeps getting trapped inside of them. I, look, I haven't done a rinse in a really long time. I just need this time for me. All right, uh, well, that's a point for both Luke and Danielle. Uh, this is a question about Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series. Mistings use a form of magic called allomancy, which uses metals to fuel magical powers. Mistings choose which metal to burn for magic based on the kind of magical effect they produce. There are physical metals like iron, enhancement metals like aluminum, mental metals like zinc, temporal metals like gold, and god metals with unique powers like lithium. Um, 
The enhancement metal is not aluminum. It is aluminium, the way <laughs> they say it in Britain. Yeah, it's, uh, it's based in a British world. Uh, uh, no, no, that and, is... Uh, and, and, and grandmas just call it tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is incorrect. Uh, Sh- Shane, yeah, go ahead. Um, actually... You got this sly look on your face. Like, you have no idea what the fuck you're about to say. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna back into this one. Watch All right. It. Um, actually, they do not burn the metals to get their... Uh, properties from them. Uh, they, it is referred to as burning. Although te- technically what they're doing is they're eating it and then using it up within their, like, sort of, like, they're, they're digesting it, basically. But it is referred to as burning. Uh, I'm actually, didn't read it. Uh, I'm actually, there's probably some guy who can do other things <laughs> with metal. <laughs> Uh, he, and he's just like, how are we going to defeat him? Um, that is true, but that's not, that, that okay. also does not d- disprove yeah. anything that is here. But yeah, there, you're right. There are, uh, there are like other things that, he that can use do metal. three metals at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say no one got this one. Luke, you're, you're, you're surprisingly close uh, to what we're going for I'm here. I'm very surprised. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> We said that uh, mistings can do any of these things. Uh, in Brandon Sanderson's world, mistings can uh, can only do one of those things for each particular metal, except for the Mistborn, which can do all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there are some other characters sure, that also sure, use the metals sure. in slightly different ways. Always but, another iteration. Well, uh, uh, no points for that one. Although Luke, you were on the right track. That that was. A, a I read Sanderson. the other Sanderson books, and I was just like, yeah, it's probably some bullshit like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, our next question is a Star Wars question. Princess Leia Organa, or Leia Amalyn. Skywalker by birth is force sensitive just like her brother Luke. Leia famously displays her abilities on screen in The Last Jedi using the force to survive and escape the vacuum of space. However, there are on screen glimpses of her powers in the original trilogy. On two separate occasions, she uses the force to confirm if Luke is safe or in danger. Luke. Um, actually, that's just like twin sense. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, it's not like a twin thing. Or it's just like, all twins know exactly where their other twin is at all times. There are two great forces that <laughs> govern our world. One is the force, and the other is just like twin psychic abilities. <laughs> yeah. twins, are, twins are weird. Yeah. I mean, agree? <laughs> it's just Obi-Wan Kenobi just being like, weird, right, Luke? <laughs> right? Anyway, you yeah. want to fly away from Chad? It's like, I should get back to my moisture farm. It's like, no, listen, twins fucking freak people out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're creepy and they're weird. whole theory, you know, that they're like, yeah. Uh, when do I get to go to Tashi Station? <laughs> uh, Shane. Um, actually, I think you made that birth name up. Uh, the full birth name. That is close enough to correct to, oh, that, that, nice. that I'm going to say it's right. Leia's middle name is Amidala, uh, named after her mother. Amelin is General Holdo's first um, name. Um, actually, that is weird. <laughs> it's weird to give your daughter your own name as her middle name. Uh... I I've no I feel like I know a fair number of people who have something like that where it's like where like the parents are like I don't want to do a junior mm-hmm. but I do want to be immortal. <laughs> <laughs> this is our second shiny question ooh, of the game. Ooh, ooh. Uh, and this is a new game we're going to try. <gasps> this is called Needs More Pixels. So we're going to put an image up here that is extremely pixelated, perhaps even unrecognizably pixelated. But we have different stages that will get gradually more clearer. Um, the first person to buzz in and tell us what image this is will get the point. We'll only give you one guess for this, so everyone can pass on a round and we'll move on to, this, to the next clearer one, or you can guess and use up your guess. So let's take a look at that image. So here is our extremely pixelated version. You can either take a stab at it and use up your guess, um, or you can collectively pass. Um, Luke is going for it. Jurassic Park. That is correct. Uh, That's wait, fucking no. correct. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's I was go gonna say Minecraft because I thought I was <laughs> being funny. Holy shit! <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look, I watch a lot of TV with my glasses off. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I thought it's like we'll go through this. We'll wait till the third one. Let's see that original one again, just so we can compare this. Here's the image as it should be. And here's here's what <laughs> yeah, Luke identified. Of course, that's <laughs> Jurassic. Park. Are you human? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, no, no. I just I love the movie, and I don't know why. I just was like, all right, movie. It's a movie. It's not animated, right? There's trees and grass. I'm like, what what thing could have trees and grass? <laughs> what, and there's then, only so many movies. At with first, trees and I was grass. like, that gets like 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I squinted and I yeah. saw it. I was like, oh. That is why. I'll tell you this because, like, we we looked over these images, and and I was sort of like, okay, first round of pixelation. That's basically impossible. And even just now, when we put that up there, I was like, whoa, that's way more pixelated than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, and I was like, wow, this is, this is going to be hard. Luke uh, finds a way. So uh, uh, there's, My proudest moment. there's a point for Luke. Um, wild. That's crazy, <laughs> crazy as shit. Hey, did you notice something that I got wrong? You can correct me by tweeting at um actually show or by going to our exclusive dropout Discord. If we like it, we might feature it on a future episode and give you a point. Our next question is a Star Trek question. Star Trek. Tribbles are small, furry, round, non-intelligent life forms with a tranquilizing effect on the human nervous system. A single tribble is not dangerous, but they are hermaphroditic and capable of self-fertilizing. As soon as they're born, they begin the process of asexual reproduction, and a single tribble can potentially lead to the spawning of 100,000 tribbles in just two days. Danielle. Um, actually, it is not 100,000 triples. It is 1,000 triples. In... It is 100,000 in two days. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Busy, busy triples. Are triples like an STD? They kind of are, yeah. right? <laughs> is that the metaphor of that episode? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, careful out there. Hey, kids, we've had a lot of fun this episode, <laughs> but... This was about space herpes. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, um, actually, you really shouldn't get them wet. Uh, after, uh, you know what I mean? Like, that's You're thinking of like, Mogwai. Mm, <laughs> I think I'm thinking of Tribble. Although I do think if you got a Tribble wet, that would be very sad looking. It would be sad. No. Be, yeah. Shane, any, any last guesses here before I call it? Go for it. Go for <laughs> it. Just throw it in the towel. Yeah. All right. So we said that Tribbles uh, begin uh, uh, reproduction uh, uh, as soon as they're born. But actually, Tribbles are born pregnant, according to, uh, to Canon, which... What kind of crazy Russian nesting doll mm -hmm. is a triple? Like, how deep does that... And that baby's pregnant. And, and that baby's pregnant, pregnant. And that, that baby's, baby's pregnant. Pregnant, <laughs> pregnant babies? Well, uh, no points for anyone for that one. I'm um, sorry to say. And what is our point spread looking like right now? Two, five, one. Very good. Uh, here is a Harry Potter question. The creation of a horcrux is the darkest and most foul of all magics, wherein a dark wizard hides a fragment of their soul outside of themselves through the act of taking a life. While the first horcrux was created by Herpo the Fowl, they were most famously used by Lord Voldemort. Voldemort created his first horcrux while he was still a student at Hogwarts, a skill he learned from Professor Slughorn. Shane. Um, actually, he didn't learn it from Slughorn. Slughorn just kind of told him what it was, and he kind of did the research on his own. That's close enough. I'm going <laughs> to right. uh, uh, he, uh He first learns it uh, from a book in the library, and then, and then goes to Slughorn and is like, hey, tell me more about Horcruxes. I read this fucking thing. Uh, so he first learns it from the book, and Slughorn just sort of kind of like, you know, helps him along there. So is that book like the wizard version of the anarchist cookbook? Right. <laughs> and, and, and Hogwarts is just like, yeah, we can keep this here. This is fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, they acknowledge that it's like, this is the darkest and most foul magic. No you, one should yeah. ever do this. You can find it in A1, section yeah. three. <laughs> exactly. But like, it's like, look, I understand, like, censorship, where does it end, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, like, like I, there's not, like, direct instructions on, like, how to build a nuclear weapon in most universities, <laughs> I would say. It's a school for children. It's a school for children. <laughs> Don't tell them how to do the darkest and most foul magic. <laughs> Well, we are going to move on to our last shiny question. Uh, this is a game called Find the Fake. On the other side of this card will be seven drawings of professional wrestlers. Six of them are real professional wrestlers. One of them is something that we just made up. Uh, the first person to identify which one is the fake one will get the point. These and are all going to be crazy, huh? <laughs> and flip. All right, oh, let's no. look at those wrestlers. <laughs> 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 Who is the fake one here? <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, oh, gosh. We're not counting the indies, right? Uh, um, oh, wait, Shane, uh, Shane is buzzed in first. Um, actually, this one who looks the most like a wrestler in the blue... <laughs> With the with that looks like Michelin Man <laughs> with <laughs> deflated tires. The third across here. That is not a real wrestler. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. Uh, Luke. I'm actually that freaking wizard ain't a wrestler. Uh, that is incorrect. <laughs> Damn. Incorrect. Danielle. Um, actually, it is the dude in the bull helm. He is uh, not a real wrestler. That is also incorrect. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> That's a shame. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, actually, it's this friar. 
Nope. That is incorrect. That's incorrect. Uh, Luke, Luke, we're, just, we're running out of wrestlers here, but what you got? Um, actually, it's the Mountie. No. That, that is incorrect. Damn that it. is a real wrestler. <laughs> Danielle, you got... Um, actually, it's the dude dresses a big baby. It's the big baby. Oh, oh, the, the big baby uh, is not a real uh, professional wrestler. He's <laughs> never been. been a big baby. He could have been. He <laughs> could have been. Uh, so the first one, does anyone know this one? This is Oz. This is a, 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 an, an early... Uh, it's Kevin Nash originally. Kevin Nash. No! Yeah. Shut up! The great beard threw me off. Yeah. How did I not know that? Uh, anyone Think know this one? sexy. Uh, or, Minotaur. That is Manatar, Manotaur, uh, which yeah. is fun because the Minotaur is already a across Manotaur. the field. <laughs> Manotaur, but this is Manotaur. He should be three quarters man. <laughs> <laughs> he just has horns. Mm -hmm. That Tron chin. dude, I, I know it's not Vader, but it looks so much like Vader that it's throwing. I me just off. watched like a, a a Rumble that he was in. This and he's like a he's like a machine man or something. This like is that. this is Max Moon. Max yeah, Moon. Yeah, whatever. He looks yeah. like a created wrestler in a video game. Yeah, yeah. like he gets like gladiator gauntlets on him and give him like a clown wig. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, this fourth one? Uh, gobbledygooker. That's the gobbledygooker. Yeah. Then uh, you, already, you already said? Yeah, that's the Mountie. The Mountie. That was uh, originally William Regal when he came on before he became the manly man and before he became like William Regal. Big Baby, we already said, not real. And then the last one? Uh, Friar Tuck. It's it's Friar Ferguson. It's oh, Friar Ferguson, Ferguson, the other one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, those are our wrestlers. Good job, Danielle. Um, you got it. Uh, <laughs> I, I did not. It took us a while, but that is a point for Danielle. <laughs> Our last question, as always, concerns real life skills. When lightning strikes, it's generally safer to be in your car than wandering around outside, thanks to the vehicle's rubber tires, which ground it. But there are some caveats. It's best to pull over in a safe location and turn the car off with the windows rolled up. And whether driving or not, you should minimize contact with metal or electronic parts of your car, like door handles, window controls, or even iPhones connected to a car charger. Uh, Shane. Um, actually, it's it's technically safer to have the car running. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> drive just as fast idling. Just, as just... you possibly can. Because <laughs> you can we outrun We gotta get to it. safety! <laughs> <laughs> outrun the storm. Uh, Luke. Um, actually, I think it is actually safer to be outside of the car. Uh, that's incorrect. It's incorrect. Oh, it's better to be On the roof of the car, car, maybe? Yeah. Strapped. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Waving a golf oh, club yeah. around. <laughs> Um, actually, it doesn't matter if you're holding a phone because phones don't have enough of an electronic charge. Uh, incorrect. That's not where we go further. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and call yeah. it. We're I'll, floundering at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I claimed that um that uh the the car was a safe place to be because the tires are rubber and that's what grounds it. Uh, and while it is true that the tires are rubber, uh, it's more grounded because the car itself almost acts as a Faraday cage to ground you. Just like being in the act of just sort of like the shell of the car is what kind of keeps you safe. Just sort of like inside, not touching any. Metal or electronics, then you will probably, if, even if lightning strikes your car, you'll probably be okay. Mm. Will I get superpowers? Um, well, there's only one way to find out. Yeah, we got to uh, So we <laughs> highly you gotta get your car up to 80 yeah. miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> lightning strike, and, exactly. and then uh, just exactly when the lightning strikes the clock tower, then you'll be able to travel back, mm -hmm. uh, back to um, to become a superhero and make, make out with your mom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that is it for our game. Our final score here is three, five, two. That makes Luke our winner for this uh, this round. Thanks to my bad eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still in shock about that <laughs> pixel thing. Um, but thank you to everyone for playing with us today, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Oh.